<laughs> How did you just do cardio and you look so pretty? I like literally, I've been running around all day. I'm like, I don't even care. This is prep. <laughs> it's like, can you see the sweat glow? <laughs> like, it's the sweat glow. Is it sweat or is it sparkle? I'm not yeah, sure. Right? Exactly. That's what it is. I'm telling you what, what makes my life and what makes me look put together always is my eyebrows, my eyelashes, and my lips. As long as those are good, the rest of me, I look put They're together. Fine. Yeah, it's yeah, it. yeah. And <laughs> usually in prep, I don't, I don't straighten my hair very often because it just ends up looking wavy anyway. Absolutely. Um, because it's just you know sweat everything like that. It's just natural, so I just let it dry and just do its thing, whatever. And it's supposed to be like this. <laughs> it's supposed to be crazy. <laughs> this is meant to look like this. I was yeah. meant to be doing that. Yeah. Well, exactly. for meeting to look like that, you look beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Totally planned it. <laughs> like, oh man, and I, you know. The other part of it too, like we were talking about last time with uh, masters athletes and stuff like that, putting a lot of makeup on actually makes, makes you look older. You know what I mean? So I try not to do like, this is just a, like a, like a light um, foundation, very, very light, like, like almost, almost a tint, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, we're going to see the sweat beating through. It's okay. It's good, <laughs> do you have a, you have cardio at your house? You have yeah. A, oh, yeah. Cool. I just got one. So last year was a pain in the ass because we had just moved in this house and there was my gym that I would go to all the time is the shop gym. And it's like 20 minute drive from here. My neighborhood is, is great for cardio because I can go up and down hills and all that kind of stuff. But if it's raining or whatever, you can't do that. And then also like just running on the pavement just kills my knees and my hips and all that kind of stuff. So I yeah. hated doing all, all that. I absolutely hated cardio. Um, this year they opened a planet fitness. So there's a planet fitness right down the street. Perfect. Well, that's fantastic. Um, whenever I need to do cardio, whatever, it's literally two minutes down the road. But my husband also for my birthday bought me this, like, it's a Bowflex elliptical. So Perfect. it's like, it's like a, an elliptical, like, but it's almost like a stepper. Like it, yeah. it really hits your glutes and all, all that kind of stuff when you're doing it. So, um, so I've been doing that the last couple of weeks and man, that kills me. Have that you ever tried me. the, uh, Cybex arc trainer? Yeah. Yeah. Is it similar the, shop, to that? the shop has that. Okay. Um, no, it's, it's different. It's a different, it's a different motion. Okay. So this thing it's like you can go backwards you can go forwards on it if you go forwards on it i feel like it hits my glutes and my 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 calves more when i go forward on it i know some people will probably go back it doesn't for me it's not as intense when i go backwards on it yeah but it's like it's it's almost it's almost a stepping motion versus like a typical like an arc trainer would go back and forth you know this is more of an up and down arc like i don't know how to ex explain it exactly until you get on it and you feel it you know that's, what i mean that's how i try to explain the arc trainer i mean my first two preps i lived on the arc trainer but it's weird because it's like the back and forth motion but if you yeah. get going it's like a back and forth and an up yes. and down and it kills my glutes so yes. it's it's similar in the way of like up down and and building the glutes right while you're doing cardio <laughs> the hard part for me is getting my my heart rate up and to stay up so like i i can it's no problem to get it up to like 120 but then once i try to get up to 130 135 it's just like it's like torture trying to get it up that high yeah so like i have to have resistance i'm pretty good with i can do it pretty decent when i'm on the um the treadmill walking that kind of thing so i can okay. like, like art like a incline that kind of thing i can keep my heart rate up okay but i still have to vary it because my I, i'll get really i'll get used to it real easy so yeah yeah you gotta keep the challenge yeah i'm afraid but it's ask. nice did you, how's your weight this week? Any, how's the scale? <laughs> no, we, we jumped right into this, this whole podcast thing. We didn't even, <laughs> right? We haven't even started yet. Um, <laughs> so let's talk about that. Play. But uh, yeah, we're on, we're on, we're on episode three. <laughs> we got to keep the people, got, you know, keep giving them the info. <laughs> I know, right? I know. So uh, we are on episode three. Let's go ahead and just jump right into this because we've already been chatting a little bit. We might yeah. as well just go. So um, we are going to be talking about show expectations this uh, this time around but we're also gonna you know dive into our own preps and stuff like that like we typically do what's going on with us our clients all that kind of fun stuff and um have a few questions that have come in through instagram and all that to talk about as well so if y'all are logging on and you know you're watching you can type in through comments or go into our instagrams or whatever and send us um send us messages and ask us questions that you'd like us to to answer and every week we'll pick a few 
um, and just kind of answer those questions for you guys towards the end. So, um, so with that, let's just jump right into, <laughs> just jump right into this. I just realized too, that the QR code is up here. I don't mean for that to be up there. Let me get rid of the well, QR we, we code. We do want to, we do want to promote CCTS. <laughs> CCTS, right? It's right there. So at least, so at least CCTS is right there. So if you guys want to meet us in person and actually get like tips and stuff like that from us in person, we're both here. So go ahead and come on, on over. That. Come on <laughs> right? over. I just realized that there's from when I do my live feeds, I just forgot to take it off. So. Oh, okay. That's cool. Okay. Awesome. We're promoting it here too. It's fine. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. Okay. So that's gone now. Okay. So let's, 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 let's dive into the prep situation since we're already there. Um, I had a weight drop today. <laughs> Finally. Okay. <laughs> a pound one. <laughs> so we'll Better see. Than I know. We'll see. We'll see if it, if it sticks. Like I always say, I'm like, okay, I dropped a pound, but maybe I just had less water or something or I went to the bathroom or I don't know. Who knows? Hopefully it sticks. <laughs> Like, well, hopefully it sticks. Hopefully it's going to stick this time. That's that's what I'm hoping for. If it's still down a pound on Thursday, I'll be happy when I that's check right. in. You know, but with that, like I've been seeing this week, I feel like the like the vascularity is on a, on the next level this week. Um, I just overall, I just feel like I'm I'm kind of next level this week. So, um, I I. I I, I feel like things are going in the right direction. Um, again, it's, it's, it's always frustrating when you're looking for a number, but, um, but the look, the look is doing good. Yeah. <laughs> the look is doing good. So, yeah. I love <laughs> so how about you? you said those side by sides. I mean, yeah. your photos look awesome. So if you well, know, I, it's, I, it's, I, it's I, like that. Yeah. And I always use the caveat too. I mean, you know, everything's a little, it's, it's everything's skewed on, um, angles and lighting and things like that too. But even if you can look past that, you can still see changes and things like that too. Like I try to keep things as consistent as I possibly can when I go through and do my check-ins and, you know, when I pose and all that kind of stuff, but there's still going to be variability. So you have to be able to, to recognize that some of that is just due to that variability, but then some of it, like some of it is actually really stuff happening. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? And I'm like, yes. oh, that's definitely stuff happening. Like I said that to my husband, I was like, you can't create, create shadows if there's nothing there to create shadows with. So it's no. not all just lighting. It can't just be all lighting. Photos don't lie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Photos exactly. Don't lie. <laughs> yeah. I, um, oh, how do you, good. how exactly. do you take your, done. yeah. How do you take your, your check-in photos? Like how do you, what is your setup? Oh, I have a setup. I have the black backdrop. I have yeah. a specific light. I have a specific yeah. tripod. I have a specific tripod height. I'm a, I'm a little, um, when it comes to my check-in photos, but just like you, I, I like to make sure that it looks the same every time. Yeah. And then if I'm going out of town, I will bring a black sheet with me. Okay. I just got like a $15 super thin light sheet on Amazon so I could put it somewhere. But if I, I, ch I check in with uh, Jamie on Friday. So if I usually I leave on Thursdays, I'll take mm -hmm. my check-in photos Thursday at my house in my normal spot. So that way it's as close to my normal as possible. If I so if I can, I, I try to, you know, keep my controllables controlled. <laughs> right. Well, that's why I switched to check-in days being Thursdays because I was traveling all the time on Fridays. Yeah. So I was like, if I, if I switch it to Thursday, I know I can be more consistent. And then even sometimes I'm traveling on Thursdays, like, you know, when you go to these Pittsburgh shows and like masters nationals and North Americans, all this, you're traveling on Thursday. Yeah. You know, so and we all know how it is checking in a hotel room with hotel room lighting. Yeah. So if that's the case, if I'm home on Wednesday, I'll, I'll do it Wednesday. Um, yeah. You know, one of my check-ins was really off was Tampa because I was in Tampa on Wednesday because the Masters were on Thursday. Yeah. So I was in Tampa on Wednesday. So I had to do my check-in photos on, on Thursday morning. Otherwise, I would have been checking in on Tuesday. Right. <laughs> That's just, just stupid. Yeah, so, two days early is, is a little early. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, no, this is stupid. Plus, I'm going to see Jamie in person. I saw Jamie in person in Tampa. So I was like, it's not really a huge deal. I'm going to see her later this afternoon when I take these photos. So Right. But, and that I is the like, great oh. thing about us traveling all the time is hopefully we're traveling to a place where we can also see our coach in person and we know how beneficial that is. You yeah. Know, yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. Just, you know, you get someone in person and it's better or worse and it's just a completely different ball game you know when they could get eyes on you and in right. multiple facets yep well with you um when's the next time you're traveling what's your next show um i'm actually going to battle of the bodies this weekend oh, okay. so uh, we're leaving friday we're gonna spend the night over there and then i think we're just gonna go over for pre-judging and then try to come back home okay um it's been so nice being at home for the last eight to ten days i mean just being able like yesterday something happened with my phone i had to run a verizon you know but i was yeah. Yeah. do that right away we were able to get tsa pre-check finally i know that's crazy like 
these are things that we haven't been able to do for the last year because we're never home longer than a few days. So it's so nice just to feel like I'm getting so much done and accomplished being in my own space. Yep. Um, so that will just be a little weekend trip. And then from there, I go to the road to Olympia with J.M. Mannion. I was okay. invited this year. Very excited about that. So that's going to yeah. be the first week of October. And then I go to Legions and then I'm not going to anywhere till the Olympia. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Crush your fingers. I know, right? Yeah. So I was saying that myself. Like, I don't have any shows on the books until Olympia. Yeah. So, like, you know, we mentioned this before, how September typically is a down month because Olympia is in September typically. Typically. You know, um, but I was looking at it. I was like, oh, let me look and see. And I can throw some more, you know, a show in here and there. And I'm like, why am I doing that? That's stupid. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I'm in prep right now. Staying home would actually be really beneficial. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, yes. I'm like, so I'm like, uh, I'm going away for like four days for my birthday um, next week. So that'll be a nice little trip. It's, a, it's relaxing where, you know, we talked about that. We're booking massages, all that kind of stuff. And then I'll be home all the way until Olympia. That's crazy. And I'm like, and then there's like a couple of, of home shows and then I'll be, it's, then it's my peak week. Right. So I'm like, okay, well, this gives me a good like six weeks to be at home, 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 you know? So that's crucial. Yeah. Crucial. I'm like, I'm like, for me, consistency is really important. Like, I'm pretty good at the travel aspect. You have to be when you're in this business, you know what I mean? You have to be good at, at being on top of things when you're traveling and stuff, but still, even with being on top of things, there's fluctuations. There's you hold water, you know, you, 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 because you're traveling, you're not sleeping like you're supposed to be sleeping and things like that. And I'm like, you know, when you get in those last couple of months of prep, that stuff's really, really important. It is. You know? And I'm yeah. like, I'm looking at the calendar. I'm like, I'm getting down into double or single digits as you are too with, yeah. with, with the Olympia. And it's like, it's not, it's not the time to be screwing around anymore. You right. know? Yeah. It feels weird for us. Cause we like to be on the go and we want to be at every yeah. show, but we have to take a step back and realize that being in our routine right now to show up our best is what we need to do as an athlete, right? Yep. So we show up where we can as a coach, just like you. I have maybe a few local shows, but like yeah. that's like two hours away at most. So that's yeah. nothing to me. Um, so yes, definitely shutting down the travel until after the Olympia. Cannot wait for that. Yeah. Well, you're <laughs> lucky being in Florida. Yeah, you're lucky being in Florida. There's, there's shows everywhere. So it's one every we, weekend. <laughs> the weird part about this year for us too is that um, we used to have a promoter in Maryland that is no longer promoting for the NBC IPB. He dropped off this past this past year. So, like the shows that I would typically go to in October and things like that are Maryland shows. Same thing was with with March. So the Arnold hit, and then there was like nothing. Typically, there's 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 Maryland shows in March, and there's nothing. Got so. It. It's like I'm looking. I'm looking at the schedule, like looking for stuff to go to, and I'm like, "There's actually not anything." <laughs> no <laughs> options. So, I'm like, I'm like, all right, never mind. <laughs> like, okay, Fine. Fine. <laughs> keep prepping. I know, right? Well, you know, and again, you're lucky that you're in Florida. There's a lot of shows in Florida. I think it's one of the most active states when it comes to the NPC. I think I think that Texas is the only other one that's that's higher than you guys as far as um, NPC members. Correct. Correct. Um, and then I think maybe right behind you is California, maybe? California. Yeah. Yep. Um, and then our area here, I mean, I'm in Virginia, but it's the DMV, so DC, Virginia, Maryland. So we've got all the, we've got all these states that are in a cluster. So we all go to all of them, but then also Pennsylvania. Oh, so Pennsylvania yeah. is right there. Pittsburgh. That's why I go to Pittsburgh so much. I mean, it's only a three to four hour drive. Um, and then if I wanted to go up to new England, like the New York shows and stuff like that, they're only five hours. You know what I mean? So it's really not that big of a drive. I, it's my, nothing. my, my stopping point is six hours. If I have to, if I have to go drive further than six hours, I won't, I won't do it. Mine is seven. <laughs> It's Charleston. <laughs> Charleston is seven. Yeah. That's yeah. that's it. Anything I've yeah. done a twelve hour. We we did one year. We drove from here to Charleston, Charleston to Pittsburgh, and then I think we drove home like straight through. Wow. <sighs> Never do that again. Yeah. No. It's very silly. Like it's a hard drive. It's not yeah. just like cruise and go for fifteen. It's just like a lot. Yep. So. I've done the drive to Tennessee. I've done the mm. drive to Chicago. 
I'm like, Chicago's not bad. Chicago's like a straight shot. Like it's really okay. not bad. Um, Tennessee is the hilly thing yes. going through West Virginia and all that kind of stuff. And there's literally nothing there. So it's like, yeah. if, you, if you break down, you're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> you know you're what I mean? looking out over like, you know, if you go off the road, oh God. Yeah. Uh -huh. The thing that has those truck stops where it's like, if they yeah. have to like go up the thing and I'm like, yep. <laughs> where <Emergency>. am I? <laughs> right. Going back to Florida flat and palm trees that's what i need always <laughs> absolutely yeah so so yeah so it's, a, it's an interesting gonna be an interesting couple of months but i'm like i'm i'm happy about it because again we were just talking about Katie's conference stage this is the time frame where i have to plan that and you know when i first did that this is our ninth year so when i first started that there were no shows from november through till March, there was like nothing. So, you know, we were like, well, we got to find something that we can do in this four months of time <laughs> where there's nothing going on in the industry at all. And now that's not the case anymore. It's like, you know, it was, it was kind of easy to plan that because I had downtime and I was like, okay, I can, I can get all this stuff put together, but that's not the case now. You know what I mean? There's shows um, every weekend. Yeah. They go all the even way around the holidays. Yeah, they go all the way through till Christmas, and then as soon as um, New Year's is over with, we're already looking at shows the, the end of January, beginning of February. Um, you know that kind of thing. Lo local shows, I mean, they're, they're hitting before the Arnold even hits. You know what I mean? So, wow. Um, you know, so now I'm like, okay, well, I've got these weeks at home. I might as well take advantage of them and get stuff done. You know, absolutely, I mean? oh, absolutely. Man, it goes, the time goes by so quick. It goes it by does. so fast. So I mean, it's already almost your, Wednesday. I know. <laughs> I feel like well, I was like, started. <laughs> you know, how's your, your Olympia prep start uh, going so far? It's so good. Um, yeah, we, I mean, cardio's up. We, I, she, Car Jamie's like trying to do like this slow increase. And we, t after you proposed the uh, question to me last week of like, what's the goal? I was like, that's a great question. So <laughs> yeah. When I checked in with Jamie, I was like, what's the goal? And yeah. It, exactly what I thought. We're trying to go a little bit tighter than we were um, and then kind of fill into the show. We want to be ready early. So she put me on like 40 minutes of cardio and then I just checked back in with her a couple days later. I'm like, Jamie, let's just go all in. Let's just go right for the 60. Let's cut food as much as you want to. Like, let's just, I would rather suffer now and like while I'm home, like, and then be ahead and then just kind of get refreshed. So oh, okay. with <laughs> I've been on 60 minutes of cardio for three days. My legs are so sore. Oh my God. <laughs> but I'm really excited because I got my posing routine finally from Angeline. So I've been working on that for the last couple of days. I'm like super committed to bringing a completely different stage presence this time around. And I feel like my posing is like a little jittery. So I'm just trying to really be very like flowy and yeah. stick it and just bring more like grace and sass. Yeah. And so I'm, I've been having fun playing with that. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a great week so far, but again, Are it's you only only Tuesday. <laughs> right, yeah, I know, right? Are you changing anything about your look for the Olympia? Like, are you are you sticking with the same suit color, all that kind of stuff? Are you changing anything? Yeah, I don't think I get away from the color. Um, yeah. But we did design something to make it a little bit different, a little bit different stone patterns and have some depths of some different colors within that blue. But I've, I have asked and I have gotten feedback. Don't change it. Um, yeah. I do have a red suit that did not make a debut this year yet. Maybe it will come out, not at the Olympia for sure. But yeah. um, I, I, I actually was put in that suit after the Olympia at the Toxic Angel shoot. And okay. um, we were supposed to bring our suit, of course. And then they gave us one other and mine was a red one. And I came out and everyone was like, <laughs> I mean, like girls, I didn't even know. And I'm yeah. like, wrong is this and they're like no it's beautiful yeah. so I ended up ordering it um so i had it as like a you know a fun suit or you know just kind of throwing it on whatever so i might i might bring it out later on in the year we'll see but i'm gonna stick to blue whole wholeheartedly true i think i'm stuck with it all the yeah. judges love it and they were like don't change it <laughs> well that's the thing it's like once you start winning in something there's no sense to change it there just really isn't you know yeah. what i mean i yeah. tell people too like if you want to try something different like say you go into a show and you've got your signature color and all that kind of stuff. Maybe you don't do great at prejudging. We'll come back at finals on the other color and just see what it looks like. And that's when you can play with it a little bit. But yeah. don't don't veer from it if you're doing well in it. You know. Correct. So, yeah. you know, I had actually I had a conversation um, with, with uh, Yulia, one of my sponsor girls, this this past week about that because um, the suit that she has now, she just took six that Sasquatch, which as you know, huge friggin' 44 girls and you know in that first call out took sixth place that kind of thing um she's got a new suit coming uh and it's more blue the one she has now is a blue green 
Um, okay. And then the one that she has coming is blue. And I told her, I said, you may not want to wear that. I'm just be, I'm just being honest. You may want to stick with what you're what you Doing just well did really well in. You know what I mean? Like you, you literally just got first call out at the largest show <laughs> of the yeah. year. I'm like, I don't know if you, if you should change it. You know what I mean? So she really wants to wear the blue though. So I'm like, you know, like we talked about last week, it's like, I can only say so much, you know, it's, it's your call at the end of the day, as far as what you want to do. And the blue is still beautiful and everything like that. It's not hugely different. It's like, a, it goes from a blue green to a blue. So it's not like it's a big, big difference, but I'm just like, where it can make a difference, though, is that she's doing B Battle of the Bodies this weekend. Yes. I know I'm supposed to check her. Yep. Um, yep. But Battle of the Bodies has that light blue. It's got dimensional blue yeah. in the background. So it, it could really go either way. Maybe a deep yeah. blue could really pop her or that blue with the green could contrast her. Yeah. But no matter what, I mean, props to you because her biggest thing in my opinion was her polish you yeah, know agreed years. and she came out this year and she looks so great i love the hair color yes she looks so poised i told her yep. i told her in person i'm like this is like you as like a woman you know right. like she just came out and oh god i just love her look this year so far Absolutely. and i agree with you i mean six at Sasquatch to me is like first. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? For real. I mean, anyone could have, there could have been a very easy argument for anybody in that top six. Yes. So I'm really happy for Tamika, though. She's been knocking on that door for oh, a yeah. while. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That in one of your coverages. But wow, what a great show. Yeah. I mean, and, and that's, you know, that's the thing. It's like you got to be careful with um, what you decide to change, you know, because you just come out of something like that and you do so well. It's like, all right, in any other show, you might have won it. You know what I mean? But you got 100. 44 girls. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes. So yeah, it's just, that's just the way that it, that it rolled that day. So yeah, but yeah I agree. Like um, the thing that, that I kept telling Yulia about last year is that she just needed to put on another layer of size. I was like, yes. you know, if you just come back, seeing you just a little bit bigger, <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're going to go from se from second call out center to first call out, you know, next year. And here we are. Here we are. Exactly. Exactly right. So, and yes, the, the amplified look that was also not just me, J Jamie was in on that too. Yeah. Um, and it was like, you know, after, and the cool thing about it too, is that Yulia asks questions like what can I she do does. better? You know, yeah. like, la like the first show she did this year, gosh, remind me which, what the name of it was. It wasn't it was just two days, two weeks ago. Yeah. Oh my God. I know. Was it a Texas? No, it wasn't a Texas. No, it was, it was Florida. Wasn't it? Anyway. I just saw her. I know. I literally, literally it was two weeks ago. Girl, where are we? <laughs> what day know. is it? It was two weeks ago. Was anyway. Class? Class was that class? Was yeah, yeah, it was. Yeah, it, no, was. It, it was. It was. It was Clash. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. It was Clash. Okay. So, Ooh. anyway, <laughs> so uh, at Clash, she was like, so um, she's like, anything about my look that you didn't that you wanted to change, you didn't like? I was like, you need it. You need a deeper part in your hair and more volume. <laughs> I was like, because it just it just the way that she had it with the um, at Clash. It just looked like she had all forehead, right? Because it was really yeah, it was almost gotcha. slicked back a little bit. It wasn't slicked back, but you know what I'm saying. She didn't have Not, any volume. Yeah. Yeah. And then so when she went and did Sasquatch, she did that. And it looked so much better. Like, I, I was like, oh. <laughs> the volume. Like, yeah. Just something so simple like that. It looks so much better. I was that like, was good okay. feedback. That was yeah, good yeah, feedback. yeah. And, like, I, if you saw the... Um, little story that I posted, too. I love having live feeds at these shows because I'm watching the live feed. And I'm watching her individual and I screen recorded it and everything too and sent it to her while I'm sitting there. Well, it's, while it's sending, she texts me, how did I look? Cause she's off stage waiting to go on for comparisons. Right. Right. And I was like, great. I was like, you just need to make sure you don't drop your glutes when you walk to the back. Cause when she walks to the back, they drop just a little bit and during yep. her individual. I said, just make sure during comparisons, you pop it up more. Yep. So she went out during comparisons and no issues. The the glutes were up nice and high. I was like, you perfect. Wonderful. Fantastic. You <laughs> Yeah. Like, it was, and you know, because when you got again, when you got forty four girls, that means you've got a good thirty to forty minutes in between individuals and comparisons. You know what I mean? So we had yes. time to do that little, the little back and forth. So it's helpful if you're not, you know, even if you're if you're there in the audience, great. But I'm not in Washington. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm right. on the other side of the country. So yeah. Um. So it's just helpful that you could see that. You know, just just be able to to give those little tips and stuff like that too. So. I can always, I always carry my phone if I can with me backstage because Drew or Jamie will text me too, like, Hey, fix that. Blah, 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 blah. So I, yep. I think that's super helpful if, if you can. And if it's not distracting, you know, obviously it's an individual thing. And then if you are yep. 
able to bring your phone backstage. Some shows I'm not, but it is helpful. So the coach can say, cause I'm B and then I have everybody yes. else line. So I have time yes. to go, Hey, what did I do? What was this? Blah, 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 blah. So yep. it's helpful. Well, it's the same thing. And the, where I really saw it too, is for myself because, um, last year in New York, when I got off stage after my individual, Jasmine had sent me the, ta- the, the, the screen recording of the live feed of yep. my individual. And I felt like I really screwed up my individual, like really bad. Like I felt like I did a terrible job and I'm watching the, I'm try- watching the video. I'm like, Oh, it wasn't so bad. <laughs> I was like, I didn't do as bad as I thought I did. I was like, yeah, there are some the flub ups that, I mean, I'm not, it wasn't perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but just all of a sudden my confidence was like, oh, okay. Yeah. I, mean, it, I, really, it's I really that wasn't, bad. Yeah. It really wasn't as bad as I thought it was. You know what I mean? So that was helpful. And it was like, I, I didn't have that at Dallas because they didn't have a, a live feed, but you know, at the same time, like it just, again, just, it just kind of settles your brain a little bit. Sometimes you get out on stage and you feel like you're shaking all over the place. You feel like you don't really nail your poses, you know, all those kind of stuff. And then when you can watch it back in real time, it's like, oh. Actually, it was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I think that's a great point because, like, we feel that shake on stage yeah. sometimes, and we're thinking, "Oh my gosh, they see us shaking." Yeah, and we go back and watch the video, and we're like, "Oh no, it, no, you didn't. It wasn't that bad." Yeah, Jamie tells people that all the time at like conferences and stuff. When people ask, him, "What do you do when you're shaking on stage?" And Jamie's like, "99 percent of the time, we don't see it as the audience, and what yeah. persists. So if you're thinking about that shake, it's just going to keep getting worse." So that's, that's a really great point of like, don't just breathe, just breathe, and try yep. to get, get rid of that thought, go somewhere else, be confident because yep. if not, if you keep persisting on it, it's probably just going to continue to work, get worse. That's, right. that's when you start to see that shake actually on stage. That's right. And also, and also know if you can handle watching those things too. Like for example, cause if I'm going to show with newer competitors and things like that too, a lot of times they get on stage and they don't even realize what they did, like they black out when they're on stage. I hear you know that. What I mean, time. like they don't even remember what they did. Yeah. So you know, me you're being in the that audience, do that. <laughs> yeah, me being in the audience and sending them a video or something like that doesn't help. You know what I mean? There's 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 a time and a place, and there's also knowing what a client can handle, what they can't. You know what I mean? Like there's some some girls that can handle critiques, no problem. Like Yulia, I can send her that that text, and it's no problem. I know she's going to take it. And she's going to apply the the critique. You know what I mean? Yeah. Versus some of these other girls who are just starting out. You tell them something like that, it freaks them out and they just completely screw up the rest. You know, Correct. you yeah. got to know, you got to know when and where to temper, you know, what you're sending, what you're saying, all those things. Like I, I do this all the time and it used to bother the crap out of me. I had this coach that used to change our poses right before we went on stage. It was terrible. Like he did it all the time to everybody and it, every time it would just screw you up completely. Of course. You know? Like all of a sudden you get completely stressed out. You blow up because you'd start having all this water retention because all of a sudden your stress goes through the roof and all this kind of stuff. I saw I saw one girl look fantastic one minute and completely like look like she was six months pregnant by the time she got on stage because of her cortisol stress. flying through the yeah flying through the yeah. roof. I'm like you gotta know that when you tell somebody that stuff backstage, it's not gonna help them. You no. know what I mean? Let's it's not too, it's too late at that point. Yeah. You tell Unless them Unless it's after. a seasoned athlete. Like you That's know right. that athlete that you can make that 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 game time decision but I would say yeah. the time you can't do that backstage. That's right. Yeah. Like unless unless they've done this for a few years and again are yeah. Julia or something like that, right. where they can take that, that 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 it doesn't do any good. It doesn't no. it ju- all it does is mess with their head, you know. Yeah. Just let them go out there and perform what they've been what they've been practicing. And then when they're done, go back and do game tape. Give that feedback. Exactly. Because mm-hmm. literally, like that small adjustment that you're probably making backstage is probably not the make or break of them just okay. completely getting freaked out, fumbling, getting stressed, blowing their physique. Just let them have their toes out, knees out, whatever. Just let it ride. Because the That's rest right. of the routine is probably going to look great. <laughs> well, at, at the end of the day, too, like when we're talking about amateurs, most of the time, it's not the presentation that's the problem. It's the physique. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yep. it's like there's only so much that posing is going to help if your physique isn't there. Right. Right. So right. by me standing backstage and telling you to fix this pose and that pose or whatever, that that's actually not going to help because the judges see through that. Right. right. They judge your physique first. Now, obviously, they can they can only judge what you present to them and you want to give them the best possible presentation that you can. But at the end of the day, if you need to grow glutes and you need to grow shoulders, there's no poses that are going to help you grow glutes and shoulders. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know what I mean. No. So, again, it doesn't help. It doesn't help at all to be to be that 
crazy person backstage. You know what I mean? Right. So let right. them go out and display what they've built. Let them go out and display what they've worked so hard on and have a really good time doing it so that they want to come back and they want to improve the next time and they want to build on their physique and they want to change those things that they got critiqued on and things yeah. like that. You do that ahead of time and it ruins the, the, the experience for them. Yeah. I had an athlete that went on stage one week and she was, she completely fumbled her posing. And then she was like, I want to do another show just so I can get redemption for my posing. Yeah. Great. Me getting on her that day after prejudging about posing was not going to help anything. A true athlete can, and we're going to talk about this in our topic today, a true athlete can take a look at themselves and say, this is where I screwed up and I could have done better. And that's what she did after prejudging. She owned it. I didn't hit my poses. I was freaking out. It was her first show ever. But I want to do another one next week, even though my feedback is to grow, just because I want to be able to get on stage and do it confidently. And that's that's what we did. She had a great show the second time. And that, that was it. You know, that athlete was not going to respond to me going, why did you do that with your poses and make sure that you hit the po- pose in the night? No, we just had a fun day. She came out for the night show. It looked great. And then the next weekend, she didn't fumble anything because she learned yeah. from it. She took that week. She practiced every day. By the time she hit the, hit the heel, hit the stage the second weekend, she felt so much better. Yeah. And I, it was the same thing with me from New York to Dallas last year. Like I went from being shaky in New York to this is fantastic in Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm so good at this. Yes. First show of the season for anyone, even a pro, it's just about kicking the cobwebs off. Just get back yes. up there. It takes time. Well, one other thing too. So with the stages, do you do better on smaller, more intimate stages or do you do better on bigger like expo stages? Smaller. Really? I like yeah. the bigger ones better. Yeah. I don't, I, I guess I would say that it just depends. But this is where I know I don't do good is when, the lights are so close. I am a sweater. Yeah. I am uh, very heat sensitive. So when those lights are so close and I'm B, so I'm always toward the front corner of that stage. It is yeah. so forgiving. I have to hold my pose the entire time. I can never sneak back behind the line and like, you know, where other girls are just kind of like standing there, but not really holding the pose. I got to hold it the entire time. Yep. And I'm very heat sensitive when the lights are so close. So mm-hmm. I say intimate, but then <laughs> that's yeah. really when the lights are so close. I don't know. That's a good question. Maybe I'm not sure. (laughs) I like the big stages. And the reason why is because I don't feel like I'm on top of people. Like, so do New York pro, if you've done that show or if you did universe or anything like that, that stage, you are on top of the judges, like literally on top of them. You could put your hand out and and touch them. That's that's how close you are. And it's, it's uncomfortable. (laughs) It's like, you are looking up at me like it's just like there's no like you the the lights the way that they hit you you can see everybody in the audience like it's no there's no like stage and audience it's just one big room yeah yeah versus when you're at an expo like going back to to dallas dallas was uh europa well whatever they call it ubu now whatever they call it now um huge stage enormous Okay. Huge expo, tons of people, but you know that all those people, not all of them are looking at you. <laughs> like sure. they're, they're going to booths and events and things sure. like that. Yeah. And then also the big, huge stages for me, I, it takes me a little bit to get into it. So walking on stage is actually helpful for me because if I can walk further, I feel like I can get into my posing a little bit better. I versus agree with if that. I'm like, versus if I'm just stepping on stage and have to smack into a pose. I agree with that. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like I, if I've got, yeah, if I've got more time to get out there, I can get into it a little bit more. I can feel it a little bit more. I hear the music. I pose yeah. the music, things like that versus, okay, you're on stage in the center of the box. Like, yeah, you know, I agree with that for sure. So, and I feel like, and I'm not, I've, I've not been on the um, Olympia expo stage, but I feel like that would be one of the more fun expo, like expo stages to be on. Cause it's so much. I do. And all that. Yeah, I mean, last year was great because it was just enough energy, but it yeah. wasn't like, have you ever been to Miami International, the Miami? No, Rep- but I know what you're talking about. I know what so, you're talking about. It's, it's a similar setup. It's got an expo, but it's got like the ninja games and the slapping okay. and pillow fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's very loud in there. It's very distracting because mm-hmm. you can it's it's big but it's tight it's it's yeah. it's hard to explain so you can hear you the music that's supposed to be for the IFBB when you're on stage but you also hear all of the other things that are happening and the crowd reacting and it that is a little overwhelming too yeah. but the okay. Olympia one it, it was similar but they didn't have as much of like you know the other games and and ninja things right 
on. So I agree with you. you. There's a bunch of people and you know that they're around, but they're, you know, that they're looking at other expo halls or, you know, whatever. So mm-hmm. I think yeah. it was ran very well last year. And the, and the, I think the Olympia stage at the expo was big, but it wasn't too big and it wasn't, it was small, but it wasn't too small. It was like, yeah, just right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I felt and like there was plenty of room. <laughs> yeah. The way they had it set up last year, was it, they didn't have it. Was the, was the floor carpet or was it, uh, uh, fl- like wood was what, what was it? It was carpet. It was like okay. a, on the on the um, expo one. It was a really short carpet, black carpet. Yeah. I actually liked it. It wasn't it wasn't bad at all. Yeah, the the one in Orlando I think was pretty thick carpet for the expo stage. That's the worst. Like the North yeah. Americans carpet, everybody gets yeah. tripped up on that. It's like mm-hmm. so high profile. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, girls like literally get like a little like area rug that's shag because yeah. like if you compose on that you compose on the north american stage yeah well and they were saying too at the olympia this past year for the final stage that it was squishy like because that was a that venue was what chris angel's venue so they have people like jumping around on that stage all the time so they actually Correct. Have, like, like foam or whatever underneath there for the jumps and stuff so you go on there with with bikini heels <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> right. A mix of gymnastics and a bikini. Yeah. 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 It's also, and they, and they also said they didn't, yeah, they said they didn't get a chance to walk the stage or anything like that either at finals. They just had, they, like, they hit the floor and they're like, oh my God. Like, yeah. Yeah. That, that, freaked that, me out. that whole uh, theater was closed actually when it was Meet the Olympians. Chris Angel, I mean, Meet the Olympians was right next door to that theater and yeah. he had a show that night. Oh, so wow. I'm sure it was a quick turnaround for them to get that up and running. So, yeah. Well, Orlando or Orlando should be a little bit easier. I, I won't I be like I won't setup. be going between three hotels this year. I'm so happy, so excited. No, that's crazy. So crazy. crazy. Were you? Did you stay at Planet Hollywood? All of the athletes were staying at Paris because they moved bikini to Paris, right? They did. Okay, and okay. then tanning, makeup, and everything else was at the one next Planet to Planet Hollywood. Planet. Yeah, Planet Hollywood. And then <laughs> pre-judging was at the Venetian. So yeah. you had to get in a car and go to the Venetian a yeah. couple of weeks away. So, I mean, the morning of the Olympia, I woke up, everybody, we talked about that. I woke up sick. I had to walk to yeah. tan. Then I go to from tanning. I had to go walk to makeup. Then I had to go walk back to the Paris to get ready. Then I had to find it. It was, it's yeah. a lot. It's a lot. Well, I, cause I went to Paris once. I stayed at Planet Hollywood um, because the wellness girls were at Planet Hollywood. So, so were the fitness girls. I had two of those in, in the show. And then Jamie tells me she's at Paris. I'm like, why are you at Paris? <laughs> I was like, cause they moved the bikini girls. And I think the men's physique guys over there too. Yeah. And I was like, Oh, all right. So I went over there one time just to go check in with her and then Venetian. And I think, I, I do think that the switching between hotels is probably one of the reasons why a lot of people got sick, you know, going outside in the cold and stuff like that. Like I know for me, like I walked to Venetian cause I was like, it's a 20 minute walk, you know, like it's, it's not terribly cold outside. But again, when you start thinking about it and you're going in and out, in and out, in and out, that's probably the smoke, the, worst. Yeah. the smoke of the casinos. Yeah. I mean, and you have to think the athletes are still doing some cardio and yep. you're walking. I was walking 15 to 18 K steps a day, not even trying. Yeah. Like Jamie's like, can you just sit? I'm like, I have have stuff to do. do. I have to go. Right. Yeah. Something to yeah, it's something to take into consideration. It'll be interesting to see what they do with it. They're gonna, you know, bounce it back and forth. I think a lot of people like it in Orlando. I do think a lot of people like it in Vegas just because it's Vegas and that aspect, which I do too. I get it. I totally get it. So it'll be interesting to see what it does over the next couple years. But for the for this year, I'm happy it's in my hometown. I'm happy it's slowly (laughs) getting moved back up to where it should be i know so we'll agree. see we'll see what happens yep. how they figure it so, all out so with that let's go into our topic for today which is show expectations and you know how to manage those that kind of thing going into it i know you had a bunch of notes i had a bunch of notes going into it um you know the, the main reason why i thought about this particular um topic was because of sasquatch this past weekend uh and you know you, going into that show, I, I think Sandy mentioned something about 20 plus girls that were in that show that have placed top five in other shows, but you've got 44 girls on stage, so they can't all place in the top five. You know what I mean? So you have to go into shows with appropriate expectations. You know, one of the things that I always tell people is that you want to you want to shoot for the moon, but at the same time, you got to keep your feet on the ground. You know what I mean? Like you... you it's a really hard thing to do in this sport because you want to go into a show saying, I want to win this show. Of course. 
but the realistic thing is not everybody is going to win, <laughs> you know? So you have to go in with other goals as well. I think that you don't ever want to go into a show saying that I'm just doing this for fun, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. <laughs> Sorry. You don't do all this work. You don't diet all like this. You don't do all this stuff for fun. No. That's not why you're doing it. We compete it. to win. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. That's right. Whatever anybody says, I just want to do it for fun. No, you don't. No, no you don't. No. You can sit there and you can try and say you want to do this for fun. You're not doing it for fun. Nobody likes, it's not fun to lose. Right. Nobody likes to lose. I always, my husband has this saying, my husband's a little more brutal than I am. So his saying is, if you like to lose, you're a loser. So, yeah, <laughs> I mean, nobody likes to lose. Nobody, no. you know, it sucks. No. So, you know, going into shows, you want to have a winner's mindset. You want to have that, that mindset of, I am going to win this show. But at the same time, again, that's not going to happen every time. Correct. So, you know, you, you have to sit back and say, okay, if I don't win, what, what do I, what do I want? What else do I want? What are my other expectations and things like that going into this show? Yep. Um, You're going to lose so a heck of a lot more in this sport than you win. And mm -hmm. if you could be that's a right. good loser, that's how you win. That's right. Yeah. Well, and every loss brings a, brings a lesson, you know, every loss brings a lesson and you can always um, improve upon your last package. Like we were just talking about this past year, you were saying about a girl, your one girl that she just wanted to do another show so she could nail her posing. Right. Well, for me, like when I did New York, I, I just wanted to do Dallas so I could nail my conditioning. Right. Cause I knew I, I I'm like, I know I need to put more muscle on. I know that like I'm not, I'm not blind. I understand what my, my, my critiques are and things like that, but I'd want to do another show so I can nail my conditioning. Right. So I went into Dallas with that, that concept in mind. Well, I got my period the day of the show. So I didn't, I didn't nail my conditioning. <laughs> my conditioning was not good. Not um, your conditioning was not there. That <laughs> no, it wasn't. My presentation was fantastic. It was a thousand times better. So I was That's really happy about that. It was a positive. Yeah. I'm like, but my conditioning was not where I wanted it to be by any stretch of the imagination. So at that point, you know, you have a decision to make. It's like, okay, do I continue to compete where I know I don't have enough muscle just so I can say, okay, I nailed my conditioning finally, or do you get off stage and go make the improvements that you need to make in order to do better the next time you get on stage? Stop wasting said, time. Correct. That's right. And I said, yeah, this is stupid. I'm like, I, yeah, I could do another show and try to nail this conditioning, but I'm putting myself behind by doing that. So, you know, my show expectation was not met at that particular show, but I knew why it wasn't met at that show. So then you have to create other goals from that point. You know yeah. what I mean? And again, winning is not the only answer as much as you want to, you know what I mean? You've, you've got to have other things in mind. And I'm like, okay, I know what I need to do in order to be competitive. And that does not include getting back on stage again. Right. Yeah. Um, and then also the, the, the thought process of going back to Sasquatch, just because you win a show, doesn't mean you're going to win the next one. I mean, look at, look at Eureka, you know, yeah. Eureka's coming in off of two wins. She was obviously the front runner going into that show and she ends up placing third. Right. So just because you win, doesn't mean you're going to continue to win. Yeah. And I think this applies a lot to girls that are just starting in the sport. Like mm -hmm. We talked about this last week, going up to national level and things like that. Just because you win a local show does not mean that you're going to go up to the national level and just blow everybody away. Yeah. Usually, usually you, you don't even come close. Usually, you know, there's Absolutely. always going to be those, those people that do just skyrocket up. There's always gonna be those anomalies, those genetic elite, things like that. But your show expectation as you move up the ranks should not be like, okay, because I won this small local show, I'm now going to go win nationals. Yeah. And I right? did that. We talked about that yeah. you know, in our, our episode one, when I won the overall in Tampa, I was, walking into every national show, like I'm getting a pro card this year. It didn't mm -hmm. happen. Didn't mm -hmm. happen that year. That's right. It did. Nothing's guaranteed. Um, but I think that's a really good point of each show. Obviously we all compete to win. And mm -hmm. I'll also say when I first started coaching athletes, you know, one of the questions I ask on the phone is what's your goals? What do you want out of this? And they would say, I don't care how I place. I just want to get up there and get the photos and have the experience. Are you sure? Are you sure you go to a second call out 10th place? If it's 10th place, you're dead. Yes. I don't care. I would take them through the show knowing good and well, they're not going to get in that top call out. And every single time they came off stage and they were disappointed. So I don't do it anymore. I do not do that anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I'm 
very realistic. And now everybody shows up and we're in the top call and everybody's happy because yep. of course we all want to win. And just like you, 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 you're saying, which was a great point. This is not just a sport where you're like, well, hopefully it works out and this is fun. And I'm here for the experience. The experience is really not that fun. You're no, gonna, not. <laughs> you're going to grow. I mean, we got to be a little sick to love this sport, right? There's yeah. a, is a caveat that we like it, but is it fun? I don't know. I wouldn't really necessarily say that, but you got, you got to have other things that you mm-hmm. want and, and want expectation wise on show day. Yep. Absolutely. You know, and that, and that's the thing. It's like, you can become an entirely better person through this sport. It can uh, affect your entire life in a better, in a better way. If you go into it with the correct expectations, right? Yes. Yeah. And you know, that you can apply things that you learn in this sport. You can apply things to your real life, to the way that you work, you know, the, your business, all those kinds of things. I find that some of the most successful bodybuilders or bikini or figure or whatever, whatever bodybuilders in bodybuilders. general, yeah. you know, are really good in other aspects of their life too, as far as like business and home life and just finances and just having everything in line and in order because it's discipline and it's just doing everything that you're supposed to do every day kind of thing. So it can actually bleed into being a, being better at everything else in your life too. Right. Right. It should, you know, how you do anything is how, how you do everything. That's right. That's and, right. and that's yep. what bodybuilding has done for me. I mean, I, I've I've always been driven and things like that, but bodybuilding has made me so disciplined and goal seeking and always yearning for more and never settling. And that's mm-hmm. the that bodybuilding has given to me that has now spread out to my business, yep. my, marriage, my friendships, and that's that's what a something should do. Like we've already talked about on other podcasts, bodybuilding should not be your entire life; it's a piece of your life, but. Right. It, Speak into all the other parts of your life, hopefully in a positive way. Could be a negative way too, if you take it that way. That's right. And for for a lot of people, it does go a negative way. It becomes obsessive. You know, it becomes something I've seen girls and guys where they just get on this train of show, 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 and they get worse, 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 worse. They lose relationships. They lose money. They lose jobs. They lose, they lose themselves chasing after this unrealistic goal. And it's yeah. again, being able to step back and say, what is your expectation? And the other part, knowing that like just winning that pro card is not going to make your life like set. That's not going to happen. Nobody even knows what a pro card is when you're outside of the sport. Sorry to break it to you. Yeah. You say you're going to be pro. And they're like, Oh, what right. <laughs> you do? What? What? What is that? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, You don't it's just get your pro life. card and you're like, wow, I feel yeah. different. I mean, of right. course I feel proud. And there is a, yeah, another level of competition and things like that but nothing changes you still go home and you're still yourself and you still have your your life you know that's right that's right so kind of going back to what you were saying before so your clients that that now you 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 don't let them get on stage if they're not ready to get into that first call out things like that how do they respond to you when you tell them something like that like do because i can imagine i know I, i i tend to be a little bit harsher than some people when it comes to my, my critiques to my, my clients, like meaning like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Like I'm going to tell you exactly what the the issue is and what you need to fix. So for some people, they thrive on that. Some people love that. Some people are like, great, awesome. Let me, let me figure out what else I got to do to get better. Other people are like, screw you. I'm going to go find somebody else who's going to tell me what I want to (laughs) hear. You know what I mean? That's exactly right. And, and it starts on the consult call. I, 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 you know, I, um, ask a lot of questions on my consult calls. If the client is comfortable sharing a check-in photo with me or sharing a swimsuit photo with me, I already know kind of what they look like. Mm -hmm. And I I am, I'm very black and white. I'm very detail oriented. And I like to give a realistic expectation. My famous quote on my consult calls is you are signing up for a bodybuilding show. We need to body build so we can get to this level of show. Um, and so when I have a consult that comes to me and they're like, I've been training for, you know, about six months and I saw this girl in the gym and she does bikini competitions and I want to do one. And now my first question back to them is, have you even gone and watched a show? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, let's start with that. And then I'm very realistic on based off their photos. I'm like, Hey, listen, we need at least six months to a year to build. And then we're going to come out for this. Or, you know, some people are like, great. Thank you for being honest and transparent with me. I want to show up my best. So you tell me when I'm ready. And that's my client. That's a client Mm -hmm. for Jordan Brandon. I have had console calls where they're like, thank you. No, thank you. I want a coach that's going to take my money and put me on stage in six weeks. Okay, great. No problem. 
that's just not me. Yep. And I'm very realistic and they appreciate that. And I try to get to that pretty soon on that call because I don't yeah. want them to waste their time. I don't want to waste my time. So that's talked about right up the gate. Most people really appreciate it because yeah. they do want to win. One right. of the very first questions I ask is, are you competitive? Oh yeah. Okay. Well now, now I know. Now I know exactly yeah. where this consult's going and, you know, being able to tell them what's needed. And, you know, I, ju I just come with information. Hey, this is our sport. This is what they look for. This is what you have. This is where we're lacking. And this is what the top five need. This yeah. Yeah. So it kind of just works out. You know, I'm just honest and transparent. I, I am, I'm a big believer and it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So as long as yeah. you do the compliment sandwich and, yep. and most of the time, that's what it is. There's so many girls on my roster there, you know, people are like, I'll tell you, well, you don't really have like a lot of athletes on stage at once. No, I don't because most of them come to me and they grow for six months to a year. Yeah. For example, my client Kelly that just steps on stage for the first time a couple weeks ago at the clash did very well and a couple girls were going back to her backstage and they were talking to her and then they ended up messaging me you know wanting a consult with not, whatnot and they're like i wish my coach told me to take time in the beginning because i was on three hours of cardio a day i was on no carbs for three weeks into the show because they didn't reverse diet you know and most women are on 1200 calories when they show up to us where do we go from there mm -hmm. so i just yep. try to be honest and realistic and usually it works out yeah and it's 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 always interesting to me because a lot of times it'll happen. I don't know if this happens to you. I'll shoot somebody straight and they'll go off and do their thing or whatever. And then like a year later, they come back. <laughs> and they're like, you Just got right. one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm like, yeah. I'm like, you know, at the end of the day, I, I, I want the, what's best for you. You know what I mean? I want to, I want to tell you not what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. You yeah. know what I mean? And I would rather you take a year off and build or whatever and have longevity in the sport versus just run you into the ground and say, yeah, get on stage 15 times. You know what I mean? And like, and I'm not even the training and diet part of it. You know what I mean? I tell these girls, I can see it. I yeah. can see like you need to build size in order to do this. You know what I mean? Yulia's I go back to her again. She's another great example. You know what I mean? She was talking about doing more shows. I was like, Yulia, at the end of the day, I was like, you are in the sec center of that second call out. If you want to get up in that first call out, you have got to put on size and it doesn't help you to keep going show after show after show. It's like, if you go and you take another good off season, you're going to come back and you're going to be in that first call out. You know what I mean? And some people love that. Some people love that. And they take it and they run with it like Yulia did. Some people don't. Yeah. You know? And then they a, a year later and they're in the same spot. Yeah. And they come back to you and they needed that. Right. But then they come back and they're like, man, I wish I would have done it then because now I would be stepping on stage That's right. if I just listened to you first. But they needed that experience yep. to know their heart. OK, this is. I surrender. This is yep. what I have to do. So for them, that's, that's what was needed and that's what worked. Yep. But uh, you know, it's, it's great when they come back to you. I love when people come back because then they really got to see the, the, the grass is not greener That's <laughs> on right. the other side on most cases. And at most time they're coming back to me even a little bit worse than, than when they left or when they didn't sign up with me that first time. And that's totally okay. I'm going to fix it. But yeah. they needed that to know that now we are where we're supposed to be. And now we That's can right. progress and move forward together in a confident way. That's right. Now, also, I mean, you're in this situation where you're a coach and a competitor. So do you think that by being a coach that has helped you be a better competitor, like stepping out of the, the competitor shoes? Like I know for myself, I retired <laughs> for, for a few years yes. and, I, <laughs> and I completely took myself out of the competition mindset completely. Like I was yeah. like, I'm not, not doing this again. So, you know, I looked at it from a different set of eyes and all of a sudden I saw it a whole lot clearer than when I was actually in it, because when I was actually in it, I was just the, you know, I, I just. Different lenses. Yeah. I didn't see myself clearly. I didn't see my physique clearly. I didn't see what I was doing clearly. None of it. And yeah. It, it was just taking myself completely out of it where I was like, oh, I've been doing this wrong for a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I got it. Okay. Makes sense. You know, yeah. has, that, has that helped you along the way? Just kind of taking yourself out of the, out of that driver's seat a little bit. Definitely. As a, as and, a and, and you have to remove those hats, right? Like if mm -hmm. I'm an athlete and I'm trying to, let's, let's take in between the Tahoe show, for example, that was seven hours between pre judging and finals. That's mm -hmm. a long time to be splitting center and not knowing what's coming next. Yeah. So mm -hmm. what I, do, I try to remove my athlete hat, put my coach athlete or my coach hat on. And literally what I was doing was 
removing my head off of my photo so I couldn't see myself and saying, what do I see in this physique? Which was my physique, by the way. What do I see in this physique and what could be changed? What could be different? I was really happy with what I was seeing. Like if I just saw that physique, I was like, damn, that looks really good, right? But Mm -hmm. that was one of my points today of managing show expectations is the ability to be real with yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think that being a coach has made me a better athlete in that regard because after a show or after pre-judging, I try to really sit and think, could I have done anything more? And people talk about that all the time. Did I leave any stone unturned? But what does that really mean? Like, did I really push my cardio those last few? Did I cheat on my diet? Did I practice my posing 15 minutes a day like they asked me to? Did I fumble my pose? Yeah, these are all things that I could probably be better at. But Uh you know what I did say to myself in between the pre-judging and finals at Tahoe, I kept asking myself, could I have done anything more that prep? And the answer was no. And that was the first time I've ever really been truly able to say that. Yeah. If you you can say no, and let's say I got second that day, I would have still been okay with that because I knew that there was nothing more I could have done. Right. But if I got second that day and I'm like, damn, I cheated on my diet a week ago or that last week of cardio, that's on me. Yeah. I have to own that as an athlete. That's on me. And maybe that's now where I go to Jamie, like my client didn't go, I screwed up my posing. Let's go one more just because I yeah. just need redemption for myself. So yeah. a part of it is just being real with yourself. And if there's nothing left in the tank, accept whatever that score was that day and move on. If there's something that you can identify that there was an issue or that you know that you can be better at, that's even better because now you have something to build off of going into that next show or that next season. Yeah. And speaking of that, like, you know, understanding and seeing things clearly, the genetic aspect of it, right? Huge. So huge. And I, and that's something that I don't think is discussed enough between an not. athlete and a coach. I think that coaches are so afraid to be real. Yeah. And it's, it's hard. It's a, it's a genetic sport. If you're gifted genetically, you're going to do better. It just, yeah. it just is what it is. Yes. Hard work can overcome a lot of genetics. It can. Yeah. But at the end of the day, if your body doesn't fit the criteria, if you're not born to fit the criteria, there's not a, there's not much you can do to fix that. <laughs> you know what no. I mean? Like you can get so far. Like I say this all the time. There are going to be people that even with like not so great genetics, they can still win a pro card. Right? Yes. Yep. Myself included. <laughs> right. But once you get to the pro level, it becomes 10 times harder when you don't have those perfect genetics because you don't fit the box. You just yeah. don't. And I, yeah. I mean, I, I'm, I know that about myself. I know I have to be real about that with myself. And like, like when I, I, when I'm taller than every single girl on stage and the majority of that is because I have really long legs, I know that's a problem. You know what I mean? So going into shows, I have to set my expectations, understanding that even if I'm the hardest worker on that stage and I do everything that I possibly can, there's probably still going to be people on that stage that are going to be better than me yeah, because of the way they were born. Yeah. You know, and you can't fix your leg length nope. and in bikini, you're in a box as far as yep. muscle goes. It's not like you can add more muscle. It's you, you mm-hmm. kind of tapped out some at some point in the sport. Yep. And that's where you're saying you have to be realistic about that. That's right. That's right. You know, so I, I try to tell people, I'm like, just because you do well in that local level doesn't mean you're automatically going to be the next Miss, Miss Olympia. <laughs> it's just, you know what I mean? Like you get stars in your eyes and stuff like that. But as you move up, you're going to realize that no matter how hard you work, if you weren't born a certain way, you might not make it all the way there. Yeah. Yeah. Right? And unfortunately, the judges don't look at that scorecard and go, oh, Jordan hit all of her cardio and she was the hardest one on That's cardio. Right. So they don't know that. That's right. Know? And there's girls that are going into a show doing two hours of cardio a day. And there's girls going into a show doing zero hours of cardio That's a day. Right. It really doesn't matter. The That's genetic right. component is huge. Yep. So again, just managing your expectations when you go into shows and then finding goals that you can achieve. You know, um, I work with a lot of masters women, right? Yeah. Uh, I always tell them, listen, could you make it to the Olympia? Probably. I mean, there's, there's, there's options to do that, but why are you trying to stick yourself into a box where you don't really fit? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. why don't you try to be the best Masters bikini Olymp- or be bikini champion or try try to go to the Masters Olympia or whatever? You know, try try to put yourself into a box where you have a realistic expectation of hitting that, that, that target yes. versus trying, if you're 55 years old, trying to be, be a 25-year-old. You know what I mean? It's just, 
you have more life experiences than that 25 year old girl does. You know what I mean? That means you are in a different league and different doesn't mean bad. It's different. Just different. You know, it's different. And we need to be accepting and embrace our differences. You know, Yes. I tell people all the time, like, you know, I'm, I'm 41, I'm almost 42. I'm like, my life didn't start till I hit 40. I'm, I'm telling you, I'm a different person now than I was just a couple of years ago. I was like, yeah. And I love that aspect. You know, I'm not the same person I was when I was 20. In a lot of ways, I'm better. Thank a lot God. of ways, I'm better. For me. <laughs> I know, God. me too. Same. 30 was like, like <laughs> I'm like, I look back at how much of a mess I was in my 20s. And I'm like, man, I'm glad I got out of that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> 20s are rough. You're like, you're not, you're not financially secure yet. No. You're not secure yet. You're trying no. to, you're like dating. Things are so up in the air in your 20s. And like, I remember when I was approaching 30 and I was like kind of freaking out. Everybody's like, oh my God, you're going to love your 30s. I'm like, really? And I turned yeah. 30, I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm a little bit more financially stable. I have a career. I'm, yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm aging in reverse. I feel like you're doing the same. Yeah, same thing. I'm like, yeah. you know, I, it, you know, part of it too, and I say this to my friends a lot, I'm like, I think a, a lot of, and I'm just going to be honest, a lot of the reason why I feel the way that I do now is because I don't have kids. And I know that's a terrible thing to say, but I really feel like I'm the same physical person that I was when I was in my twenties. Right. Uh, and I have yeah. this discussion with my girlfriends that have kids all the time and they they agree with me. They're like, mm-hmm. you know, and I, and I, you know, I agree with them too. Like I get, I'm like, I get that you're a different person now than before you had your child, because now you have a whole other little being that you have to be present for, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, part of that is like, I still feel like I'm in my twenties in a lot of ways. I really do. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> I'm like, and then my knees crack and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's right. <laughs> I know, that's right. I almost, I almost 22 years old. So there's that. I'm in a no kid club too, though, because I, I, I'm the same. Like I just, yeah. I feel, it's not for me. And yeah. I have all, my friends are having babies right now. Yep. Uh, we just found out that uh, Drew's middle brother is having a, his first kid, our first mm-hmm. child in the family. So we are so excited to be aunties and uncles. But yep. my favorite thing, I say this about our youth athletes at the gym that I own in Tampa called Pinellas Ultimate Strength House. We have a youth athlete program. I love when the kids are there for an hour, yeah. but my and favorite. I know. I, I'm like, I'm an auntie. Like I have, you know, little nieces and nephews and stuff like that. And I love them to death. But man, even getting on FaceTime calls with my sister and, and the kids, I'm like, how do you do that? That's <laughs> like, 30 that is a lot Not of energy. Yeah, that's a lot of energy being expelled in that one room right now. Yes. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm for man. it. No, I'm for it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, and just, and I, I, I'm a fur baby mom, you know, I have dogs and stuff like that. And I 100% agree that dogs are not the same as kids. Like right now, my dogs are sitting upstairs sleeping. I don't have to worry Mine about too. them. I'm they, like, they're yeah, just chilling right now. Yeah. So I am not saying I am even remotely close to being a mother because I have children or fur babies. Not fur babies close. are perfect for us. <laughs> they really are. They really are. They're the best. They give you nothing but love and all that they want is food and attention. Yep. And, and, that's and snuggles. And that's all <laughs> that's we need it. to do. That's exactly right. So I'm like, I will never, I, I say it all the time, like, I will never compare being a, a dog mom to an actual mom. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm very aware of the, of the things that I don't have to do because right. I don't have kids, you know what I mean? Not comparable, not the same. Yeah, right. So <laughs> that, that was a complete total tangent, but my Sorry. point was... <laughs> Sorry, forever. Sorry, we're good. Complete tangent. But my point was is that if you are a master's athlete and you do have children and you do have all this stuff, you're in a completely different league than somebody that doesn't and that somebody that's 20 years younger than you. So understand that your expectation for stage should be different. And honestly, that's one of the reasons why I like working with master's women a lot. Because they don't expect to be Miss Bikini Olympia. You know, they don't expect that. They do go on stage with expectations of winning their master's class. You know, they go on on stage with expectations of potentially winning a master's pro card or going to the master's Olympia or whatever it may be. But they still have real lives, too. You know what I mean? This is they really do feel like this is is enhancing their life. It's not totally their life. You know what I mean? Versus when you look at a lot of the women in their 20s and stuff like that coming up in the sport. They want to be Miss Bikini Olympia or Figure Olympia or Wellness Olympia or whatever division it is that you're in. And there's nothing wrong with that either. But again, it's just a matter of knowing where you fit and what your box is and being proud of that box. You know, Jessica Wilson's a great example. 
of somebody who, yeah, she's in, actually in the open bikini Olympia, but she's a master's athlete as well. And she was like, I'm going to use this as a platform, you know, to really boost master's athletes. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, me you know too. I mean? And she's such a great representation for yeah. a sport, master's athlete. I mean, just hands down, just love her to death. Yes. And you guys, she's, she's one of the top bikini athletes in the world, period. Yes. But she finds that her calling is to be that particular figurehead. Yes. Which I think is fantastic. You know what I mean? You know what's something really cool about Jess? And this is things that we're all talking about, the, you know, and it hits my points, which I want to bring this book really quick. This is the book that I'm reading right now that I've posted on social okay. media, which goes very well with what we're talking about. It's called The Champion's Mindset. But what I love about Jess, and if you were at CCTS last year, she talked about this. What is so strong about Jess is her mindset and knowing when to push, knowing when to pull back, yep. realistic expectations of herself. And she's just so even, you know, yes. she doesn't take herself seriously mm -hmm. um, in the way of like, if she doesn't win a show, that's okay. That's okay. Yep. I'm on the next one. I'm, like, she's just so positive and she just is a really good way of grounding herself and always showing up positive. If mm -hmm. she doesn't win, she's still happy. She's still encouraging others. She's still hugging everybody Absolutely. backstage. That, if you hear that's Jess, that is Jess wholeheartedly. Yeah. So I think it just comes down to her and everything that we're talking about, what's going on between the ears, what's up here and how, what is your mentality going into any and every show? Yes, absolutely. So, you know, again, keep your feet on the ground, head in the clouds, you know, that's, that's what you want to do. Um, any other closing thoughts on the expectations aspect that we didn't touch on? I think we got most of them, right? Yeah. I mean, I think the last thing that I wanted to say was just like, ask yourself bef before the show, what's the worst thing that can happen? The worst thing that can happen is don't, you don't win that day. And yeah. okay. If that's what happens, what am I going to do to cope with that? And that's mm -hmm. something that this book has, that's from this book. And I was like, that's such, such an easy concept, much harder to grasp. Right. But really if you break it down that way, okay. If I don't win today, that's the worst thing that happens. But what am I going to do after the show if that's the case? I still, like, do you want to be that girl backstage? It's like, you know, kicking your stuff around and yeah. clearly mad. And you're like, everybody's like, no, of course not. Like, you know, so just try to think about what that is, how you're going to cope. And I think that's a different answer for everybody. So that's not really something that we, you know, answer here. But really at the end of the day, it's that simple. You know, and just yeah. keep it, just like you said, your 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 head above the clouds, but your feet on the ground. I think that's a great, great way to put it. Yeah. And I would also say just to close on that that note too, is that it's just a bikini competition. <laughs> yeah. You know, at the end, the end of, the of the day. Absolutely. Yes. It's like it's not life or death. You no. know, it's not gonna change your life other than how you how it changes you. You know what yes. I mean? The following day, nobody's going to even know that you stepped on stage unless you tell them. Yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Nobody yeah. cares as much as you do right. about this. You know what I mean? So you got to make sure that you're happy with what you put on stage. You're and happy. You you're get your expectations. Yes. Correct. Because yeah. you're the only one at the end of the day that's even going to care. Absolutely. You know, yep. a great example is when you look at, you know, our the top of our sport. You know, Maureen wins the Olympia a few months later. Laura Lee wins the Arnold. Everybody's talking about Laura Lee and nobody's talking about Maureen anymore. Right. Those are the top of our sport. Yeah. That's the top of our sport. You know what I mean? And it's like. Yeah. The ebb and so, flow. Yeah. You, you, you got to be okay with what you're doing. Because again, nobody else gives a flying rat's ass. Yeah. <laughs> like just be just happy don't. with what you're doing. You're placing day yeah. in, day out. Absolutely. That's right. That's right. I mean, so, at the end of the day, just show up and have fun. I mean, you work so hard for that moment. Yeah. Just go have fun. Manage expectations yep. for sure. And 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 that's it. Just just try to, I love what you said, just have other goals outside of winning. Always mm -hmm. think gold. Always think being a winner. Of, of course. But have other things outside of that too that you want to achieve that day. Because if you don't really quite get the gold, but you got everything else, that's still a win. That's, yeah. that's still something to be proud of. Absolutely. Because you got all the things that you could control versus the one thing you can't. You yes. Know? That's, that's so, it. Yeah. All right. So with that, let's, let's just cover a couple of questions that came in on Instagram. Um, <laughs> so the first, first one. one, I, 
<laughs> yeah. So what's the longest that you stage, stay, stay at stage lean in between shows? You go ahead and answer this one first. Definitely last year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I turned, I turned, I mean, I started prep January 1, turned pro in May, went all the way to the Olympia December 17th. So January 1 to December 17th, we'll say. <laughs> That's even longer than me, but actually it's kind of not. So my, what season was it? I think it was the third year that I competed. Um, this was the year that I, I, no, maybe it was my second year. Anyway, whatever. Um, I started the year with prep on January 1st and okay. came in and did a local show in figure. I think that was in, was that in May, April? I think it was April. And then for three months, four months. Yeah, I think it was April. And then I, I went on and did whatever the first, I think it was junior, junior nationals. Yeah. I went on and did junior nationals. I think junior nationals was earlier that year. I think it was in whatever. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but I kept, I kept going and I went to junior nationals and uh, you know, I was told I was too small for figure that kind of thing. So I was like, okay, well I'll go to bikini. So I just kept going <laughs> and I went to like, got it. That was the year. Show, okay. And yeah, went to nationals, got crushed, went to nationals, got crushed, went to a nationals, got crushed. Like I, I did like five or six shows that year between locals and, and nationals and things like that. Got to December. I did nationals in uh, at that point it was in Atlanta that was in Atlanta. Wow. And that was at this time. It was, I think that was November. Yeah. It was right before Thanksgiving. Yep. And, uh, that's when I started eating my face off when I got off stage. <laughs> that's when you know it's that was time. It. <laughs> yeah, that's when that you was know it. it's time. I was like, all right. So it's literally from like January all the way through till Thanksgiving. So we've done it. We, you, I mean, yeah. you were just one month shy of mine. So yeah. it's same yeah. thing. And it was terrible. So it's no, a I long do, time. Do not recommend. I mean, do, do not recommend. <laughs> but but two completely different circumstances but yeah. special circumstances right you were changing divisions so you went for the first half then you switched then you were doing a little bit more i obviously was you know kept getting so close to the olympia so close, mm -hmm. so close got it so a little bit of special circumstances but do not recommend on a normal yeah. basis for yeah. sure especially if your feedback is to grow right. shut it down <laughs> yep well you know to my defense it was it was i was too big or i was too small for figure so i was good for bikini so that's why i kept going you know right what I mean? right 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 because you're sweet but, <laughs> but still it was not good by the time i got and you know again i'm five foot nine by the time i got on stage at nationals i think it was i was, I think it was like 125 pounds i was a stick i was a dick like i could break in half i was so skinny so wow it was not good um <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's that answer so, uh, yeah. <laughs> trust less than a year or, yeah don't don't follow our example cool no. all right awesome so um supplement favorites and must-haves to maximize your nutrition workouts do you have any must must-haves my like uh gosh I, I have a lot, but I'm just going to go. My go-to is my intra workout shake. I truly believe I love an EAA and a vasodilator in my intra workout with some salt. Um, it helps me with recovery, helps me feel the pumps, especially when food is super low. Um, obviously, I have to remove those a couple weeks out from the stage for added sugars, but that is like my tried and true. Um, and then magnesium glycinate. I mean, I think it is just the most underrated supplement on the market. It's, for me, it's so good with my digestion. I'm definitely one of those people. Obviously, I travel a lot, but when I travel, my digestion goes. So yeah. I magnesium in the morning and night helps me go to the bathroom, helps my muscles stay. Um, it's like I'm an all natural muscle relaxer. So recovery, less soreness, yeah. things like that. So those are my two top two tried and trues. How okay. about you? Um, so I don't, I don't take a whole lot of supplements. I take a okay. lot of vitamins. Um, like I think that DHEA, DHEA and like vitamin D and things like that really essential, um, taking stuff for your skin, hair, nails, all that kind of stuff, I think is really important. Um, I don't do pre-workouts. I don't do a lot of protein stuff, supplements, period. I just don't like the way they make me feel. Um, I have some sensitivities to dyes and things like that too. So I just don't like doing a lot of that stuff. The only real supplement that I take is caffeine. Yeah. Like, you know, that's really about it. Um, as you can see, I'm sitting here with my caffeine. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not to <laughs> I was doing, I was doing my cardio prior to this. So I do one of these a day. That's, that's my caffeine. I have a cup of coffee in the morning. That's my caffeine. Um, and it's my coffee. It's not bullshit coffee. It's coffee that that's a really strong black coffee. Um, and other than that, like I do take, you know, st and stuff like CBD and things like that, THC, stuff like that to, um, to help with relaxation and things like that. But again, I don't, I don't, 
I, keep I, it pretty simple. Yeah, supplements I think are supposed to be supplements, meaning if you're not getting them in your diet, then you need to be taking them elsewhere. You know what I mean? Absolutely. But if you yeah. to throw in stuff that was never there in the first place, that's not a supplement. That's that's something else. You know what I yeah. mean? So yeah. if we're paying you know, five hundred dollars a month on supplements, vitamins, yeah. and minerals. Yeah. But a little overboard. Yeah. You know, and I, I used to be, you know, linked to a bunch of different um, companies. Like I used to be sponsored by different supplement companies, things like that. But I, I don't really do that anymore because I don't use them. You don't use them. Yeah. And be real to the brand. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. So like, I, you know, I got approached a few months ago and I was like, well, send me the, some of your stuff so I can try it and everything. And I was like, for what it is, it's pretty good. I was like, but this is not something I'm going to use. So I'm <laughs> like, it's just, yeah. I mean, but that's how I am too with like my, my like sponsorships and things. I don't want to promote it unless I actually yeah. love the brand. If I have to post it on my social media X times, like I want to make sure I love it and I'm using it. So I appreciate that a hundred percent. Yeah. And I think, you know, at the end of the day, like I'll do protein powder and things like that, but it's more of a convenience thing. So yeah. like if I need to throw in some extra protein for the day and I just need, you know, whatever, I've got protein powder on, on hand all the time, yeah. you know, but that's not, it's not something that I have to have, you know, right. like it's just, it's just not. So I like to I, eat my food. I, yeah. Right. And I will say I do, like I mentioned this a couple, uh, maybe last time on, on the podcast, but I do take a sleep supplement that's been really helping me a lot. I'm not yeah. affiliated with them at all, but it's the raw nutrition, um, sleep supplement. Yeah. yeah. I, I do take that. And that has helped a lot. And I've just been taking it for the last few months. So I will say that I, I focus, if I'm focusing on recovery, I think that's more what I'm looking for when it comes to supplementation than anything else is recovery. Sleep, sleep, sleep is, yeah. is crucial for good recovery, but yes, absolutely. Yeah, really is. So yeah, I'm, I'm boring when it comes to supplements, but this is what it is. It works. I, I <laughs> I get some of these clients and their supplement list is two pages long. And I'm yeah. like, why, why do you need any of this? If you yeah. just eat a serving uh, two or two of greens a day, then we can remove half of this. Mm -hmm. You're just creating easy. really expensive pee. <laughs> That's it. Yes. Just saying. <laughs> really just expensive saying. pee. Yes. Buy, buy all that shit and sell it. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> And then the, the last question that we have is uh, best foods and prep and why? What, are, what do you consider to be the best foods and prep? I consider this a, it depends question. I know people hate that answer, but what does it depend on you and your mm -hmm. digestion? Um, you know, yep. I have some clients that can eat raw oats all day long and their digestion is fine. And then I have some that it just terribly bloats them. Same thing with egg whites, same things with whatever, sweet potatoes, everybody's different. So just finding what works digestional wise for you. Obviously, if we're in a prep, it needs to be whole balanced, you know, nutrient dense foods. Mm -hmm. um, I think in a prep, you know, this is where it's hard, you know, especially if you macro track, I think that you should try to keep it as simple as you can. That way mm -hmm. you are very predictable of your body. I like to tell my girls two carb sources, two protein sources, two fat sources, try to stick within that. And if you need one or two days of some more flexibility or a little bit more fun foods within your macros, that's fine. Just have that adherence. But when we're four weeks out, we got to be dialed in. Yeah. Um, so sticking to things like rice, oats, lean meats, veggies, fruits, um, tracking sodium, all of these things work. Um, you know that Brussels sprouts do not work for you, but you, because they flame you and you just love the taste of them and you keep eating them. That's not the best food for you in prep. Right. You got to right. remove that. You got to, you got to be reasonable with yourself about that. Yep. And I would agree with all that too. Just keeping things as simple as possible. And you know, it's one less thing you have to think about. And I know for myself, like even the way I prepare foods, like I get, um, again, I'm not affiliated, but I do mega, mega fit meals. Right. That's right. Yeah. yeah mega mega fit. Fit. I do trifecta. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I get their bulk proteins. So me too. that way I know that they're cooked the same every time I eat, you know what I mean? So chicken, beef, salmon, shrimp, yes. I get protein pancakes. I take the protein pancakes with me when I'm at shows and stuff. That's easy. And they're protein and they're, they're carbs and fats and we're good. You know, we got a full meal right there. So I can just take it in my bag and go. But, um, but yeah, that, that kind of stuff, sticking with the same kind of, um, carb sources. Like I do a lot of rice cakes. Um, yeah. my fun food that I have every single day is those Dave's protein bagels. The, yep. the, these killing yeah, yeah 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 the cinnamon raisin ones are my are my jam i have one of i like the bloomin' berry yeah those are okay i like <laughs> the 
other one's better. I, I, I sometimes I'll throw in that one or I'll throw in the everything bagel and everything bagel too, yeah. but the cinnamon raisin's my jam. <laughs> um, that, literally. You know, yeah, 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 literally. Um, you know, I try to keep fruit in my diet. Like I'll do, I'll go on kicks where like I'm, I'm doing bananas. I'm doing bananas now. I'll do bananas or, you know, I'll do grapes or. I love I'll frozen do... blueberries. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can, you can crunch on them and suck on them. Yeah. So mm-hmm. good. Fiber, yep. antioxidants. Yep. I don't know. Jody and I, Jody Younger. Oh my God. Yep. Her and I can go through some frozen blueberries. Yep. <laughs> I agree. I love blueberries. So I go on these rotations of yes. fruit. You know what I mean? Right now I'm on the, right now I'm on the banana rotation. So, um, and that's what good else? for your digestion, too, yes. that you're not just sticking to the same foods for weeks in a row yes. so that your body's not building up intolerances to otherwise right. healthy foods. So I love yep. that, that you're kind of, you know, two weeks on with a banana, switch it here, and mm-hmm. that, that keeps your digestion in check, too. It sure does. And then, you know, again, monitoring, like I, I would talk about the egg whites. I can't do egg whites anymore, so I don't do egg whites. Um, I don't do eggs in general anymore just because they mess with my digestion. So for a lot stuff of like that. Yeah, stuff like that. Um Trying to think what it, oh my my fun fat that I do almost every day is dark chocolate. So, okay. Okay. Um, I used to do I, Lily's dark chocolate um yeah. chocolate chips. Yeah. I um I don't do well with milk chocolate. I actually break out from milk chocolate, but dark chocolate, I'm good. Okay. So I don't know. The dairy? Is it is I, I, yeah. It might be just the way it's processed or something okay. like that. I'm not. I'm not really sure. It could be the dairy. I'm not. I'm not really sure. But every time I have milk chocolate, I break out from it. So I'm like, here's a prep pack. I, I've been giving this to my girls, and they're like, really? And they all love it. They're like, oh my gosh, this is so simple, but it's so good. It's literally just chicken, rice, coconut oil, and mm. coconut oil is a is a really clean, simple fat, and I love it because for every one gram of coconut oil, it's one gram of fat. So it's really easy just to like okay. plug and play. And salt. Yeah. I actually put a little cinnamon on mine and some like yellow mustard. And I know that sounds weird. You get weird combinations in prep, but how many girls I've given this recipe to, which it's not really a recipe, it's just a combination yeah. of things. <laughs> and they're coming like, Jordan, yeah. this is great. The coconut oil has the sweetness and the salt. I'm like, Yeah, great. I'm so glad you left chicken and rice. Yeah, I <laughs> know, right? It's really good. So if you're in prep. Try, try it. That was that was my. I, I I don't know why I watched Jody eat this all last year and I never had it, but I finally yeah. had it myself. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is really good. <laughs> well, I'll also say I had one prep where all I was allowed to eat was chicken, tilapia, coconut oil, and asparagus. Oh, you're over it then. You'll never look at it again. <laughs> I can't do. I can't do coconut oil anymore. I can't. That's it was, I, it was like beef. every meal. I was like, Ugh. that was my like first you, ground beef asparagus. Oh. I can't even look at it. <laughs> no, I'm like, I'm like the the texture, the smell. The, I'm like, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm it good like for a full. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> Isn't that funny that the combinations and like the yeah. weird like food isms we get in prep? Everybody yeah. has theirs, but that's like even now I can do I can do salmon till the cows come home, but I can't do whitefish. Like yeah, wow. The only time that I'll do whitefish is if I'm at a restaurant or something and they're cooking it fresh. Like I'll yeah. do it then, but otherwise I can't do it. Not from home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. No. I get that. I get no. it. So. It's a mental thing, but hey, it's, that's, that's part of it. When you <laughs> eat it every day for six months, you're like tilapia. Bye. <laughs> yeah, it's no, and it's the same thing with asparagus. Like I'm like I can't even do asparagus. Like just ugh. like everything about it. I'm like ugh, ugh. Oh, crap. I do it. <laughs> I will say one of my favorite things though to put on like to put on like beef or whatever is bacon bits. <laughs> really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Because okay. they're not, I mean, it's a little bit of fat, a little bit of um, protein, but not a lot. And you just put like a tablespoon or, a ta- or two tablespoons or whatever you want to do. But it just adds a little bit of flavor. And Crunch. it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I like it. Yeah, yeah. Bacon, bits, bacon, bit, bacon bits are my jam. <laughs> All right. Well, if bacon bits or coconut oil this week, please let us know. <laughs> yeah, all right. I know. Hey, little things. Little, little things. things. But those are the things that you have to do in order to make it um, fun. We talk about how this is not fun, so (laughs) make it fun. (laughs) Listen, if frozen blueberries are what keep me going in this prep, bacon bits, bacon bits, Mm -hmm. then that's what we got to do. That's fine. (laughs) (laughs) Awesome. And on that note, all right, let's wrap it up for today. So, um, Thank you guys all for joining us. We just kind of rolled right into this. We just, I turned the camera on and started recording. So uh, we didn't even say like subscribe. <laughs> yeah, please subscribe. But that's how you know it's real. It's raw. That's uh, Yes, right. You. I mean, so, that's it. <laughs> you know, subscribe, like, comment. Again, send us questions because we'll do this kind of thing. You know, if you guys send any questions at the end of the, the topic for the day, uh, we'll go ahead and go through and answer them for you guys. Um, 
really loving all the interaction that we're getting on, on YouTube and everything too. So thank you guys. Keep it, keep it growing, keep it going. Uh, we do have the new Instagram too, the behind the bikini Instagram behind dot the dot bikini. <laughs> Instagram. I love that. <laughs> Or whatever you call it. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you know, right? So have a great rest of your week, you guys. We'll be back here again next week with our next episode. And appreciate you so much. Like, subscribe, comment. We out. Bye guys. <laughs> we didn't even we didn't even introduce ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>